Hey, welcome back to the Major Slack Attack, your first stop for titillating tactical Tamriel gameplay. And here is a complete overview of my solo one-handed warrior build. And what I mean by solo is I created this build without the help of any followers or conjured helpers, such as Atronox, conjured familiars, raised zombies, or anything like that. I just went completely solo. And oh, did I mention this is all done right from the get-go on legendary difficulty? Yeah, want to see him in action? You're watching this one-handed warrior build in action right now, single-handedly taking down two giants and three mammoths in under one minute. That's right, under one minute. And two giants and two mammoths are down already. The timer started at the beginning of the video. Looking for the third mammoth. There he is right there. This is that Bleakwind Basin. And boy, yeah. Two giants, three mammoths, under one minute. Yeah, single handedly. And I'm going to show you in a minute that this is truly played on legendary difficulty. All right, Slack, enough victory dancing among the dead. Show everybody that this is indeed done on legendary difficulty. Okay, here we go. System, settings, gameplay, legendary. Yeah. And I'm playing as an orc. All right, and this is not like a level 85 orc, okay? This is just a level 32 orc. There we go. And I'm gonna give you a complete rundown of all the perks I have and all the gear I'm using in a few minutes. First of all, I just wanna give you a few more examples of what you know what this guy can do okay let's try taking on a couple of saber cats here at green spring hollow typically there's just one predator here but here there is two okay two saber cats tag teaming me no berserker rage just using my gear and power attacks double power attacks in fact I'll explain more about that later watch this instant kill a saber cat double power attack yeah is your daddy and yeah I'm just showing how much damage I can take from these guys that's it down and out two saber cats tag teaming the slackster one-handed warrior build how about a bear but once again I'm just gonna like take it I'm just gonna sit here and show you how much damage you can take with this build this bear is going at it I got my shield up Right now my armor my armor rating is at the armor cap, which is 542 with a shield, 567 without a shield. And as you can see, he's clawing me into next week and he still can't get anywhere. And now I'm getting a little tired of him clawing up my shield, so down he goes. Bye bye bear. down and out. Is this build dragon ready? Let's find out. There's a dragon. Let's harass him. Take out our bow, poke him in the eye, get him activated, and see what we can do. Once again, single-handedly taking on this dragon. No townsfolk, no follower, no Atronach. Just mano a drago. <laughs> First of all, can he take the full brunt of a dragon breath? Yes, no problem. He takes a licking and he keeps on ticking. And he lands. Crank on Berserker Rage, bash him to stun him, and lay in the power attacks. I'm using perpetual power attacks uh, with the help of vegetable soup. Uh, if you want to see how to do that, see my video, How to Do Perpetual Power Attacks. And I'm also using a new technique I discovered. Um, I'm going to do a video on that tomorrow. Double power attacks. Okay, I'm going to show you tomorrow in another video. How to do double power attacks. And this dragon is already dead. So, yeah. Is he dragon ready? Yes. He is dragon ready. He is ready, Freddy. How did you do this, Slack? I'm going to show you right now. Alright, let's pop the hood on this sucker and take a look at the engine. First of all, like I said, I'm playing as an orc. 
all right and it's a level 32 orc that means i spent 31 perk points in all these various skills here let's start with one-handed that's where i have most of the perks one-handed i have seven perk points spent in one-handed this is all about increasing one-handed damage i specialize in maces all right so i have four perk four perk points spent in armsmen which increases one-handed weapon damage by 80 percent i have one perk in bone breaker which makes um, attacks with maces ignore 25 percent of the enemy's armor and i have two perk points spent to get up to savage strike okay you have to get fighting stance in order to get to savage strike and savage strike makes standing power attacks do 25 percent bonus damage with a chance to lop off the enemy's head this one there here i don't really care about but you have to get it to get to savage strike all right power attacks with one-handed weapons cost 25 percent less less stamina i don't really care much about that because i always use vegetable soup in order to be able to do perpetual power attacks okay and i've got a whole video on that already i talked about that earlier I put a link in the video description if you eat vegetable soup your stamina will recharge constantly at the rate of one point per second for a full 12 minutes which will allow you to do perpetual power attacks and um like i said i've got a whole video on that so check that out um next speech let's start with enchanting first no let's start with speech that makes sense speech in order to sell any item to any merchant you need the merchant perk okay so i've got three points in speech and you are yet yeah, three perk points spent in the speech skill tree and you need speech up to 50 in order to get the merchant perk so i've got haggling one and then up to allure and then up to merchant this will allow us to sell any kind of item to any merchant this is very important to set up the power enchanting machine which will uh, allow you to very quickly power level your enchanting and i've also got a whole video on that check it out i'll put all uh, links to all these videos these related videos in the video description okay the power enchanting machine using the power enchanting machine i got enchanting up to actually you only need to get it up to 80 but in the course of enchanting my gear enchanting is now at 87 but the key level is 80 so you can get the enchanter rank 5 perk which allows enchantments to be 100 percent stronger basically twice as strong okay it's 20 percent per level all right and i've also got the insightful enchanter perk which um makes skill enchantments on armor 25 percent stronger okay so six perk points spent in the enchanting skill tree next um heavy armor oh let's go to smithing first smithing as i said he is wearing orcish armor all right this is all orcish armor orcish helmet or orcish armor orcish boots orcish gauntlets and an orcish shield all right and uh i'll just show you that here see there's all my orcish gear this is all orcish gear all improved up the legendary talk about that in a minute in smithing i spent three perk points one on steel smithing one on dwarven smithing and one on orcish smithing you need smithing up to 50 in order to get to that why heavy armor because it's just a lot faster to reach the armor cap uh, going on the heavy armor side you can reach the armor cap going on the light armor side but it's not as fast it's just a lot faster and if you're worried about weight you can always go to the steed stone activate the steed stone and that makes your armor weigh nothing or you can work your heavy armor up to 70 which is something i never do and get the conditioning perk and that makes your heavy armor weigh nothing if you're really concerned about that okay but yeah heavy armor all right and um that's that in the heavy armor skill tree i have three points in juggernaut each point increases your heavy armor rating by 20 percent so now it's up but to a 60 percent improvement all right with three points in juggernaut and you get a further 25 percent bonus if you're wearing all heavy armor on head chest hands and feet all right so i have the well-fitted brick you need heavy armor up to 30 to get well-fitted and you need heavy armor up to 40 to get juggernaut three all right next one-handed we covered speech we covered illusion 
How in the world do you deal with packs of enemies? Slack, this is how. Illusion. All right, get yourself a fear spell, the calm spell, you know, all those great illusion spells, and you use those for crowd control. If you get mobbed by enemies, zap them with a fear spell, he runs away. Um, rinse and repeat until you're only dealing with one enemy at a time. And you're going to need some perk points in the illusion skill tree in order to A, drop the magicka cost of these illusion spells because they cost a lot of magicka, okay? And B, in order to use these illusion spells on higher level enemies, all right? These illusion spells start out um, with a maximum level of 9 and 6 for the common fear spells and the fury spell respectively. I don't use fury much occasionally. Mostly calm and fear and the maximum level for that is 9. All right. And in order to increase the highest level that you can use fear spell on, um, you're going to have to get the animage perk all right, for higher level animals and get the kindred mage perk for high level people. All right. And that requires illusion to be up to 40. All right. So four points in illusion, one a novice illusion, one a apprentice illusion, one an animage, and one the kindred mage. And you can make that even better by going up this, this branch here and get up to Aspect of Terror, but it's not really necessary, all right? And finally, Alteration. This is entirely to get the Magic Resistance perks because I don't use Flesh Spells. I'm actually reaching the Armor Cap without using Flesh Spells, okay? So I'm not using Oak Flesh, Stone Flesh, Iron Flesh. Don't need it, okay? I'm just putting points in the Alteration skill tree to get up to Magic Resistance in order to get first 10% uh, magic resistance at level 30 and then fit another 10% um, when you have alteration up to 50 so that's a total of 20% magic resistance I'm getting from these two perks here all right keeping that in mind let's go look at our gear like I said I have all orcish armor uh, let's go through the enchantments since we're on the subject of magic resistance let's start with the shield this, I have two shields actually, okay? One shield I have for melee, like melee combat, and another shield I have for mages and dragons. This shield I call the wizard shield. It increases your magic resistance by 19%. <coughs> Sorry, hang on. Excuse me. And that 19% plus the 20% magic resistance in the alteration skill tree is 39% plus... 25% from the Lord Stone plus another 15% from doing the Book of Love quest which gives you the Agent of Mara bonus. All those add up to 79% magic resistance which is just short of the magic resistance cap at 85%. So as you can see we have almost all the magic resistance that the game will allow us to have and that allows us to endure um, dragon attacks all right so that's how you and you can make that even better by adding on frost resistance and fire resistance but you know for now we can endure dragon attacks so that's all he needs um what other enchanted gear do we have let's take a look here like i said um did i explain this before no i didn't with smithing with the orcish smithing perk plus our enchanting as i explained with uh the Enchanter rank 5 perk plus the Enchanter, the Insightful Enchanter perk, you can make some kick butt smithing gear. Okay, these four items here smithing apron, gloves, necklace, and ring. Okay, each one improves your weapons and armor by 24%. Add up 24 times 4, you get 96%. Okay, that's a total of 96% better weapon and armor improving we're doing. All right, add that on to a smithing potion that we can make with our alchemy gear okay here's an alchemy suit i made um each item in this suit uh makes 23 percent potion 23 percent better potions uh multiply that by four because we got four items and that's 92 percent better potions and i believe this will make i'm just going for memory here because i don't have an, a potion here handy unfortunately sorry about that i believe that makes a 39 percent um smithing potion which you can add on to your smithing gear and using that you can create legendary improved armor all right so all my gear all my orcish gear is improved up to legendary 
All right, all this added up. Let's just put on the warrior's gear, okay? That's my war. That's my warrior's shield. That's my wizard's shield. All the warrior's gear added up will give us an armor rating of 579, and that's well over the armor cap. The armor cap is 542. After that, it doesn't do any more good, okay? So that's the most we can do with um, armor and the shield, 542, and we're over the armor cap. And I'm reaching that, actually, with the Lordstone, which I just realized I don't even need anymore. Yeah, the Lordstone also gives you an extra 50 points damage resistance. Okay, and the Lordstone is just south of Dawnstar. Windhelm. There's the Lordstone right there. There's Dawnstar. Southwest of Dawnstar, up on top of this mountain. Get to that um, standing stone, activate it, and it will give you plus 50 to your armor rating and plus 25% magic resistance. Alright. Um, next, you may have noticed that my heavy armor rating is outlined in green. That means I'm getting a bonus here. That's because... Yeah, let's go through these uh, enchantments here. My armor is enchanted with the Fortify Heavy Armor enchantment, okay, which gives you plus 24 points of... It actually adds 24 points to your heavy armor skill. Alright, so that's what you're seeing there. My heavy armor is actually at 52, and plus those 24 points increases it to 76, and that helps a lot in to increase my armor rating. All right, so that's what's going on there. Let's look at the other enchantments. The shield is in, is enchanted with the fortified block enchantment. Okay, so now my shield is blocking 39% more damage. That's my warrior shield. I also have a wizard shield that's enchanted, like I said earlier, with magic resistance. So I just swap between these two um, as the situation requires. So if I'm going up against a lot of melee enemies, put on the warrior's board. If I'm going up against mages or dragons, put on the wizard shield, all right? Um, boots. Boots, gauntlets, necklace, and ring, all enchanted with the fortify one-handed enchantment okay so boots gauntlets necklace and the ring here i know why this was not all right because i was used had other stuff on okay so these four here boots gauntlets necklace and ring all add up to what's that 156 yeah 100 let me just take my calculator here because i made a mistake before and it was even embarrassing 39 times 4 equals 156, yeah. 156 percent more damage with one-handed attacks, yeah. A whopping 156 more damage um, with my mace, all right? So that's where that's coming from. Uh, the helmet. The helmet I have enchanted with Fortify Archery because that's my ranged attack, okay, as I have a bow. I don't really expect to do much damage with this bow. I just have it to harass dragons enough to land okay that's basically it I, that's the only reason i use it just to harass dragons or occasionally shoot an enemy with a poison okay i'll use the bow and the bow is enchanted um with fire damage and gives it 23 points extra fire damage but that's it so it's just the helmet giving it 40 percent better damage and the fire enchantment on the bow and that's what, <coughs> pardon me, that's what's going on with that. Finally, the mace. Yeah, this is the big baby here, the molten mace. Um, I have a bunch of points in the one-handed skill tree, as I explained earlier. I have this uh, improved to legendary, as well as the bow. I forgot to mention that. It's also improved to legendary. Back to the mace. Using the same tactics that I used to improve the armor, I have the mace improved up to legendary. Plus, it's getting benefits from the one-handed skill tree. Plus, I have an enchanted with burn damage, an extra 24 points burn damage. And that's how I'm kicking out all that damage. Uh, plus, I, as I explained earlier, I use vegetable soup to give me uh, the ability to do perpetual power attacks. And I discovered a new technique, um, double power attacks. And I'll show you another video tomorrow 
about how to do double power attacks. All right, so using all that, I believe that covers everything. Like I said, if I forgot something, post a comment, and I'll be glad to answer your question in the comment section. That that's pretty much covers the entire build. Yep, all the enchanted gear, all the perks. Um, Berserker Rage, in case you're not familiar with this, all orcs, that's his special racial power. For once a day, for one minute, you take half damage and do double damage for 60 seconds. So that helps out immensely when you're going up against tough enemies. Like, you know, that's how I did that opening scene with the mammoths and giants. I have Berserker Rage um, happening. All right. And my favorite shout so far is Unrelenting Force, believe it or not. Just as simple as that. Yeah, the one that staggers. That really helps. Also, Whirlwind Sprint. This helps out tremendously to close the gap. Okay, if you're far away from a melee enemy, and let's say he's an archer and he's giving some problems, just use a Whirlwind Sprint. Boom, right up in his face and start whacking him with your molten mace <laughs> and I'm a poet and I don't know it so I think that pretty much covers it got any questions post a comment I'm done here I'd like to thank you all very much for watching and um, you know what I'm gonna do a complete walkthrough of this guy okay a complete walkthrough of the solo one-handed build over on my experimental channel slack lab uh, in case you don't know I renamed peewee pie my other channel peewee pie to slack lab and it's going to be mostly no commentary walkthroughs. Why no commentary? Because it just allows me to just just game, okay, without having to have the burden of tutorializing my gameplay, which is a big burden. It, I can't tell you how much of a burden it is to have to constantly, you know, talk about what you're doing as you're playing the game. It's it's really a just imagine a professional hockey player constantly doing a, a running commentary of what he's doing while he's playing it's just it's practically impossible it really slows you down and really kind of hampers your skills so I'm using my new channel my experimental channel slack lab for no commentary walkers just to kind of allow me to you know do no commentary just to allow me to play video games without having to be burdened with commentary okay and that's gonna start like tomorrow all right this is gonna to start tomorrow I'm going to show you exactly how I got to this point, uh, level 32, with this solo one-handed build. That's going to go all the way through 32 levels. No followers, no astronauts, no helpers of any kind. Just this guy right here. All right, so that's about it. That covers everything. Got any questions, post a comment. And if you thought this video was remotely entertaining and or informative, hey, like, fave as well. And um, subscribe in order to get more videos like this hot out the press. All right. My name is Major Slack and I will see you next video.